Well, hello there. Welcome back. With all the problems people have been having with physical media, I decided to do a video on how I handle my physical media because I've never switched completely over to digital media. I had an account with a new streaming service and they boasted when you buy something, you can have it for life. Well, I knew that was BS. And uh, when you uh, stop paying or lose access to your account, you don't have access to that video anymore or that movie, which is what happened to me. Uh, we paid for a movie that was like I don't know, popular. I think we paid like 20 bucks for it. This is what cured me of that five, six, five years ago, I think, when, when it started. Um, no, it was four years ago, four and a half years ago. We got it right before COVID hit and we got the movie and I, like so many other people, found myself in the unemployment line because of overzealous, uneducated bureaucrats. So I couldn't keep up on my bill on it, so I lost access to the movie, which cured me of uh, trusting the streaming services. Back then you had more digital rights than you do now. Take a look at Sony. All those movies you guys paid for, all that money, gone. So, like I said, I decided to do a video on how I take care of my digital media. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a DVD and then how to change the format of the DVD where you can host it on your personal media servers like Jellyfin which is what I recommend the most and B, which is the number two. And then if you guys are partial to it, Plex media server, which I do not recommend because of their, uh, ability to mix what they want to sell you in with your library, which gets confusing. I tried that out for a week and I was like, Nope, not for me. Now let's open up some stuff here. Okay. Now this is how I do it. Open up your files, locate where your video files are, and you got to make sure it's in a specific file format. Uh, mine are all MKV. I already did this once to run through to make sure it was going to work. So we want this file. I drag it over to there to Caden Live. Drop it down to the uh, board down there. Project, render, there we go. Now you can do v VOB DVD or MPEG 2. I usually do the VOB DVD and we're gonna render it to file and I want it in a specific folder, so. Save it there. I'm not worried about naming it. Quality as high as possible. Go to presets. Go to threads. render to the file now you're gonna have to adjust this a little bit you get the quality you want but I just want to get this done as fast as possible so I'm gonna go ahead and pause this while this is doing this and I'll be back in just a moment all right one minute later <laughs> close that out you can save the Save the file for later for brand for bringing it up, but yeah, I probably should have switched that to nineteen twenty by ten eighty. But oh well. Uh, close this out. No, you can save it or not. It's up to you. So now we have an untitled VOB file. Okay, you want your video? You want it in the MPEG format? Drag and drop it over here. You're gonna choose. Well, you're gonna choose video project. Well, Brasario, the program, 
video project. Drag and drop it over there. Cl highlight it. Click burn. I'm gonna ask for this, and hopefully this works. If it doesn't, I'll have to try NTSC. Got an error. Close. Burn. Now, I don't understand why this isn't working now. Now I'm getting a little mad. Pause this and try and figure this out. Okay, got it to work. And that was bruh. Rosario. I missed it because I wasn't recording it. But anyways, you take it in there. Take one NF. Convert it to MPEG. Open Brasario. Select a video project. Drag and drop it. Highlight it. And burn. And it should convert it over to MPEG 2. While it's burning it straight to your DVD. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. And come back when it's done. Oh, one more thing. This is going to be slow. If it's a large file, it's going to take a while. Ooh, at the rate it's going, probably an hour. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll be back in an hour. One second for you. Well, it looks like she's done. Let's put her back in. Here we go. Move that out. Open up VLC here. Make sure this works. Yeah, it works. And that's how you get your uh, video files onto DVDs. For some reason, uh, CD, VCD, Lib, something, I can't remember the name of it, the rest of it, is messing up. And the program's a flat pack, so I went and checked. I didn't realize it was a flat pack. I went and checked my versioning, and my version says it's up. My, the system version says it's up to date. So it's obviously using the flat pack version, and that one must be out of date. Because it says it's out of date, and that's why it's creating an issue for me. So. Okay, I'm going to pause this and get set up for the next part. Okay, now what I use to get my uh, video files off of my DVDs, you know, for personal use DVDs, just saying, this does work for other files, I will say files, because I don't want to say the actual word, because I might get in trouble for it. <laughs> um, by law, you're in, in the United States, you're allowed to make copies of your DVDs, just saying. You can't hand out your copies to anybody, and you have to have your original. If you you can give somebody else your original, and they have possession of it, and they can make copies of it, or make a backup copy. Copy. Let's be clear about that. A backup copy. Now, um, there's two ways you can do this. You can either do a backup copy and burn it to a DVD. I'll show you that. Um, let's do burner. Nope. Oh, sucks. Super Sario. I don't know why that one's all bright white. Super Sario works too. Okay, burn. For an existing CD, DVD, image to disc. Disc copy is the one we want. Now, you can click copy. And it'll do a direct copy of the one that's in your DVD. It'll put it in your uh, in the RAM, hold it, tell you to put in a blank DVD. You put that in, and it'll copy it that way. That's the direct copy. That's the most legal way of doing it. But you're also allowed to make an image of it, too. And I'm not sure if this particular program does an image of it. Um... Burn image. Click on that. Click on image. No, this one doesn't do it. 
Let me switch to the other one. Um, I believe. Let's try this one. I can't remember which one does it. Um, open. No, this one's looking for files. So. Power ISO, open compact drive, click OK. Um, it's either dev slash SG1 or SG0. Um, on one program, it pops up as SG0, and another one pops up, pops up as SG1. It just depends. Okay, we need to import that. Click on import, and it'll automatically change the DVD ROM file size. Now you can burn it, or you can make a copy, copy compact disc, copy disc image to file. And not where I want it. So where is it? Put that in here. I don't know why I did that, but anyways, you can click on it and save it. Click OK, and I'll be right back in a little over seven minutes. Man, you can hear that thing buzz away. <laughs> I lied. It only took like two minutes. OK, Click OK. Navigate and video disk 14. Now, you can also mount this. Oh, it's got that one in there. I have to close that. And you can take a look inside. And to show you, this isn't like a regular DVD. This is the content I created, not, not anybody else's content. Okay. Okay, so you can mount the DVD, like I said, and you can play it straight out of the ISO image. Um, now to extract out of a DVD, you'd want to use, oops, this fancy little program right here. What this thing does is it's going to read the disc and you click which folder you want it in. Uh, where am I? This thing never goes all the way on the screen. I don't understand why. Okay, I want it back in here. Create a new folder for that. Select. And when you click on this button, it will pull the video files back off your DVD. You know, the DVD with your own personal content on there. That's going to take a couple minutes. I'm going to pause it and talk a little bit more about copyright infringement. Okay, it's completed. Close that out. Open up your folder, and this is what it's going to look like. Oop. Wrong folder. Excuse me, that's the right folder. I'm too used to it making copies of my uh dvds um what you'll see is multiple video files more like uh more like this but it'll have uh designations of a1 floor dash t00 t01 down the line so what you need to do is this is this is a gray area to do it. So what you would need to do is open up a video editor. You get the movie back together, figure out which video files and which order they go in and restitch it back together. Like I said, that's an extremely gray area. I don't recommend anybody doing it. Something 
you probably shouldn't do. I would recommend just doing an ISO image or burning it back to a, a backup disk. But there's the option. I'm just saying. And the only reason I'm saying this is because what happened to all the PlayStation users. <clears throat> I used to hold them in high regard until that happened. I know a couple people that spent hundreds of dollars. I'm talking close to like eight hundred dollars on their on their videos on their movies that they supposedly owned. Gone. Eight hundred bucks. That's theft. It's the only reason why I'm suggesting to use that uh, function. But in the United States, I'm pretty sure if it's just a copy of it, you're okay. Now, if it's a one-for-one -one copy, you're definitely okay. And as long as you don't hand that, those copies out, you can hand the original out, but not the copies. Because you can hand the copies out, you're, you're breaking copyright law. Okay, now I draw it. Now I uh, SFTP'd into my... my uh, local media server, which is Jellyfin, and I dragged and dropped this video in the, into my uh, TV folder. So, I have another way for you uh pause this, and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. Oops. Where is it? There it is. I'm gonna go into my Jellyfin server. Okay, now we're inside of my server media uh that's what i call it and this is the jellyfin server now that's the video okay we are loaded up into virtual box and we're going to take a look at debian 12.0 now there we go. and now i'm recording my video from my server my streaming server. That's a way to get uh, videos off that you can't get off for DVD. Just grab, you know, video files that you have somewhere else that you can't, that you don't have access to that's on a different system. You can stream it and record it inside your network, your own video files. Don't do this uh, for anything else because it's illegal. And that's my two cents on it. But those are some of the ways you can. Uh, Work with your own personal files, like your uh, wedding video files, put it on a DVD, you can save it on that format. If you have them on an old DVD, you can rip it back off and put it into an ISO format, whatever file format you want. Now you're gonna have to mix and match and figure out what works for you. I just showed you a few ways. So that's it for this one. I will see you guys next time. I got a lot of editing.